Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, we're here with another Game of Thrones video, uh, the card game, second edition. Um, this time we're playing some casual play on a Saturday morning slash afternoon. Uh, we played for seven hours um, that day uh, at the Hobby Kingdom in Burlington. I just want to give a shout out to Rich, the owner there. Uh, very welcoming, he's also a player. I'll have him in some videos coming up. Uh, but he let us come there um, unplanned really uh, the day before I just decided to go through a shout out in our Facebook group and uh, Quite a few players showed up. We had eight total uh, one completely brand new showed up that morning uh, So shout out to you Jamie. Uh, it was nice to meet you. He hung around for a couple hours to see the game played uh, I appreciate you viewing my YouTube videos and all your kind words um, it was very humbling, um, and I'm glad you're a viewer, and I'm glad you'll be part of our meta, hopefully, um, once you take those three core sets you got and uh, build some decks. And we hope to see you out soon. So on the left we have Jeff. He's a local player uh, from Burlington. Um, he just started playing Thrones 2.0. He was not a player first edition. And on the right we have the uh, infamous Throne Runner, uh, who you guys know. Uh, he's part of our meta. He comes down about an hour drive or so um, on the other side of Toronto to play with us. Um, and he came down uh, to play with us this Saturday. Um, just showed up, which uh, I was surprised he did, but I'm glad he came down. He recorded some matches too. You can check those out on his YouTube channel. Uh, where you can also see him actually uh, build this deck he's playing on the right, which is a Night's Watch uh, banner of the wolf. Um, he played it all day. He did pretty well with it. Um, and you'll see that in this video, I'm sure, and uh, you'll see how it performed in uh, his videos he recorded too. So Jeff's playing a House Tyrell, Banner of the Lion. On the left, he set up a Money Lender, a the Tickler, and a High Garden. And on the right, it looks like a Tumblestone Knight, uh, the Warden, and uh, Maester, uh, I forget, Maester Eamon um, is that one? Yeah, the save. And he's got Castle Black out already, and... Uh, a Rose Road, and it looks like he so far has marshaled Arya uh, for one gold, and he's got the Lord and Lady reduction on his Noble Cause plot there, and Jeff played Calm of Westeros, not sure which challenge type he named, um, but I'm sure we'll find out when they go to uh, initiate the challenges and we see if claims resolved or not. But, uh, most players usually first round play that and pick intrigue or military and then usually later game you see them picking power or depending on the board state you and the amount of icons across the table from you and the icons you're lacking and strength numbers you might choose <laughs> differently but uh general rule usually you'll see people start off with uh, military or intrigue uh in the first round with that plot so we also have samuel charlie played out here uh he's got an extra bump to your reserve value and uh, his insight can draw you some cards He's one strength and intrigue icon. And we have Sir Waymar Royce, I believe. Waymar Royce, however you say that. And uh, he drops down one of those ravens to give him some crazy card draw in the dominance, dominance phase as an action uh, where you return those messengers back to hand and uh, draw a card. So it should be six gold collected on Jeff's side. He plays a limited rose road and Tyrion Lannister. And has one gold left, I believe. Throne Runner sitting on a zero gold by the looks of it. <laughs> yeah, it's quite exciting this weekend. Uh, we decided to play some Thrones uh, in preparation for Worlds a little bit too, just to get some games in before we go. Um, Throne Runner will be there. I don't believe he's playing in the second edition tournament because he'll be playing in the Netrunner tournament on the same day. Uh, so FFG with their scheduling really screwed Throne Runner because there won't be no Throne, uh, just some Runner at uh, Worlds 2015 for him. Uh, but I will be playing in the first edition, uh, most likely the draft uh, on Wednesday and then I'll give uh, the Joust a, a whirl for first edition. Haven't really touched Game of Thrones first edition since Gen Con. Um, just looked at my deck today. Uh, it's kind of weird looking at those ugly cards uh, after seeing these new second edition beautiful cards now so much over the last couple months uh, to then look at those first edition cards. It was kind of kind of hurt my eyes uh, a bit there. So uh, it's going to be a little weird playing that game again uh, for a whole day. 
Um, and then on the Friday, I believe, I'll be in the Conquest uh, World Championships playing in that. Um, bring in a deck I hope to have some fun with. Um, we'll see how I do, though. I've, I haven't been playing too much that lately. I've probably been playing average about a game or two a week. Uh, roughly what I would average out to over the last month. Um, so I haven't been dabbling too much, but I love that game and I hope to have some fun in it. And then I'll be playing uh, Thrones 2.0, uh, the game you're watching right here on Saturday at Worlds. So I'm looking forward to that tournament. Uh, I believe it's uh, over 200 plus players. Um, and it should be a great time. First first big tournament with uh, three core sets allowed. Uh, at Gen Con it was only Kingslayer rules, which was you had to build your deck from a single core set. So it was a little strange. Uh, but you can see videos of the Kingslayer uh, at Gen Con on my video. Um, and uh, yeah, hopefully I'll get some footage at Worlds. And you guys can see that posted. But I did record a few games at Hobby Kingdom here in Burlington. So I should have uh, three or four more videos of that coming up. Uh, hopefully this week and or next week. And I can go grab one. Uh, Something else that I don't call. Yeah. So I'll say. So Lennis Cunning's played. And I didn't catch what Throne Runner said there. I don't, I don't want him to tip me out. No, I'm like, oh, yeah. I just buried Robert under Aria. Yeah, it's, like, you know, it's like Jeff's creeped up to one power. I don't want to know. Throne Runner's at zero. And the strategy uh, you can see on Throne Runner's okay. deck building video, he right. does discuss this deck. But uh, from what I took from it, from playing him a couple games that day, um, was pretty much it was to spam out weenies and just be able to oppose your challenges and sneak in the odd challenge. Um, so from Stark, you, I know he's including Sant, uh, sorry, Arya because of her stealth. And uh, that would help him uh, sneak in a power challenge here and there to get some power. He had uh, Sansa who would stand and gain him power each round in the standing phase. Um, and the wall to gain him a couple power. He had the Iron Throne for dominance. So he had, he had just ways of creeping power and then uh, he would just get the odd little challenge in on you. Um, but it was a deck that I felt you wanted to go strong against, but then he would just, you know, oppose the challenge, but lose it. But then, you know, you would put so much into trying to win against him that he would then just steal it back and then creep his own little power sources from Dominance, the Wall, and Sansa. And before you know it, he'd be uh, close to the victory, if not winning. Uh, not too many rounds into the game. So it's, it's cool, little, cool little deck. Uh, I liked it a lot. Sorry, Dominic's action. So Dominic's action. Return the Raven to hand. Throw under draws a card. Oh well, I wouldn't know. Okay, let's pay attention to this game and let's uh, start calling the plays. All right, so filthy accusations dropped by Throne Runner against a wildfire assault on Jeff's side. So Jeff's looking to get rid of three characters, it looks like, to the dead pile, and uh, we'll have a Tyrion Nelt by filthy accusations. And Throne Runner has to check his icon spread here and decide who he's going to keep on the board to make sure. Uh, He's ready for some wall action. He's looking at his hand, deciding which icons he can put into play, I'm, I'm sure. It's the way I'd be playing it at least. It's just trying to keep uh, a good spread so you can block those unopposed challenges. So it's like Sam the Reducer. Uh, take, take it. Oh, never mind. You still are. still I don't think that. No. So they're just discussing the reaction of uh, Sir Waymar Royce there, but uh, he was not chosen to be killed, which is normally a play during Wildfire to just get a card out of your opponent's hand, I believe. So Throner decides to keep keep it the way it was and not uh, not do that. So 
Draw a phase. I believe Throne Runner will be going first. Which is not what he usually likes to do with that deck. He likes to sit back, let you come at him, and then, you know, pick off your carcass of what's left and, and, and steal some power back from you. When his guys are uh, finished blocking your challenges. So Milk of the Poppy on Tyrion. Sansa comes into play now. Messenger Raven for some card draw. Six. Assuming it's still there at the end of dominance to trigger. So sometimes it's chosen as claim soak depending on how the draw is going for the Night's Watch player. So High Garden's been duped. And it looks like we got a. I believe it's the reducer. Rose Garden? Or uh, Tyrell. And a courtesan of the Rose. Great little chump. Intrigue power, two strength, two cost. Great stats for the cost. And a Rose Road. So maybe that wasn't his limited over there. Uh, that is the Mander, actually. Sorry, I called that one wrong. That is not the reducer for Tyrell that he played first. That is um, the Mander. Let's us from draw two cards after he wins a challenge by five or more strength. And then he played a Rose Road, sorry. Because, yeah, his reducer would be limited, and uh, that does not look like it has a limited keyword. So we're starting off with challenges here with Arya Stark. Looks like power challenge, stealth. ambush this. And ambushing Widow's Whale for the block. So plus two strength on the courtesan. So military challenge, sorry, with Sir Waymar Royce. Challenge gets the bonus claim. I believe he took the money lender there. Which I'm not sure was the right play. I definitely would have claimed the courtesan uh, and get Widow's Oil back in my hand for play later. But maybe he didn't want that to be intrigued away. So, Baron the Maid of Fair was attempted to be played, and a Hands of Judgment to cancel that. And Jeff countered with his own Hands of Judgment to cancel Throne Runner's Hands of Judgment. It's a little ping ponging back and forth there with the uh, reactions. So, Baron the Maid of Fair will go through. Top five cards of Throne Runner's deck will be viewed by Jeff. We will then decide up to three of those to put on the bottom in any order he chooses uh, to return the top two back. You can also do that bear in the main fair on your own deck if you're trying to tutor it to find, you know, place your next draw the way you like it, or your next couple draws the way you like it. But uh, I find players use it on the opponent's deck sometimes to basically try to put what your opponent's lacking in play uh, to the bottom of their deck. So if they're looking for one of their big characters and you see some big characters, throw them on the bottom. Or if you see they're hurting for economy and you see some, put it on the bottom. You know, leave them with something that they can't really, you know, really uh, use at the time. And the, uh, the information gathered from that is, is priceless. I've got two. Sorry. But it says triggers. I'm just thinking. So, I think I gotta do this first, right? The dominance action. I think this is first before we count dominance. Or maybe. Okay, I'm just gonna do it just in case. Okay. So, take this back. So, we have some confusion here. Throne Runner believes that you uh, do the dominance action at the start of dominance, but it's actually after dominance is calculated so that Raven 
would count for dominance. And uh, we have the Tickler discard a card off the top of the deck. Looks like it was another copy of Arya Stark. And Sansa collects her power. So now Throne Runner is up to four against Jeff's one. And we haven't even seen the wall in play, I believe, yet. So it uh, wait till that gets out, I'm sure. If he gets it, uh, it gets a little. His power creep gets a little faster. Or the Iron Throne, for that fact. I don't remember your boss. <laughs> There's not too many good ones. Yeah, I know. It's like that. It reminds me of like that. Yeah. Looks like we're entering round three plot phase here. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
What was that one again? Um, name. Oh, he also played Alenis Cunning there. I'm not sure if he just drew it, but that would be great. Same reaction window, so he reacted to the challenge winning by five or more, drew two cards. One of those may be Alenis Cunning, um, which he then can uh, force his opponent to name a card type of the four different types in the game, character, attachment, location, or event, and the name type the opponent cannot search his deck for, but he can search his deck for any other type. So, and you have to reveal it to prove that you grab the right type of card. They did not catch what Throne Runner named, but uh, he grabs a Rose Road. So most likely, usually your opponent will name character. And uh, you just go grab whatever attachment, uh, event, or location that you feel you need at the time. So maybe Jeff's holding on to some expensive characters, that's why he grabbed a Rose Road, to keep his economy growing. It's still early in the game, so that economy will go a long way. Are you using your action? Yeah, it looks like we're in dominance. Card draw. I will use my action. Tickler. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't see what that was. Um, Obviously, they're holding it off camera. Well, you win dominance. I win dominance, and then so dominance is won by Throne Runner. Sansa will gain a power, and they're doing the wall now, which would be backwards. It's supposed to be at the end of the challenge phase. One for dominance, and then one. Yeah, he'll take the power. It's casual play, remember, but uh, yeah, definitely the. The action windows and uh, after challenges here are, are being done a little backwards, but uh, for you guys at home, it should be uh, basically each phase, you do the action of that phase first, so you resolve that, uh, so it's a draw phase. Just resolve your draw first, then there's an action window after that to do actions. Example, dominance. You know, you enter dominance, you, if you have reactions to dominance beginning, like the fiery followers, you do that, but then you do the dominance action, so find out who wins dominance, reward them their power. Then after that's done, then you have action windows to, to do whatever funny business you want to do in Dominance. So collect the power first for Dominance, then do your Ticklers and your Messenger Ravens. And same thing with Standing. When you enter Standing, just stand the characters. And if you have any reactions to Standing or Action Window, uh, or Action, sorry, after that, you can do those in the Action Window, the Standing phase. You have to do the, the purpose of that phase is to do what you got to do first, then do your actions after. So same thing with taxation, you know, return your money back to the gold pool and then there's an action window. And then I believe you do reserve at the end of the taxation phase. Same with plots. Plots are the same. There used to be in first edition an action window before that, so you could do funny business and then drop your plots, but not in this, not in this version. There's no action window there. Just once you get into the plot phase, do the plots, reveal them, finish them, and then you have an action window before going into draw. So Littlefinger is played on Jeff's side, who draws him two cards, and one of them was a duplicate to Littlefinger. He also played his Rose Road. And we see he's got the Noble Cause, Noble Cause plot, which he used to reduce Littlefinger. And Kama Westeros is played on Throne Runner's side. Not sure which challenge type he named. There's a lot of background noise in this video from the players beside them playing, and uh, at the table next to them where we have uh, four other players playing. So I have trouble uh, catching Throne Runner's voice and Jeff's voice in this video. Uh, which is mainly why I'm voicing, voicing over it, so yep. trying to clear things up, but it's hard when I'm not even clearing up things, but because uh, I don't hear them, but uh, looks like we have seven gold there on Throne Runner's side, duplicate on Maester Eamon, duplicate on Sansa, duplicate on Sir Waymar Royce, and a Messenger Raven. Iron Throne is in play, and you can see by looking at the power totals there on Throne Runner, he's just been creeping up a couple power, two to three power every round, and uh, just holding Jeff down to one power. And now he's building up his little uh, his little engine. So he's got his wall power, his dominance power, his Sansa power. They all basically put a timer on the game, and as each piece comes out, it just speeds that timer up exponentially. So. Each round you let that little little engine work, you're just going to fall behind. Because he's going to stop you from getting unopposed. So, unless you can get an unopposed through to shut the wall off, keep something up for dominance. Which is a hard thing to do when you don't have an iron thrown out yourself. 
and you need some renown. Like the only way I can think you can really get by this deck consistently is some stealth, some renown, maybe some kneel. Some kneel would definitely help to get those unopposed challenges through. Military. Some location uh, removal definitely would be key to blow away the wall and then uh, blow away the Iron Throne if you can. So I'm not sure this Nice Watch deck would handle Greyjoy too well, but uh, I'm not sure if I got that in a video or if Throner himself did. Uh, but you can check his channel out and see if uh, any of the videos he posts in the coming days uh, have this deck facing Greyjoy or not. But uh, he did record, I'm assuming, three or four matches of this deck being played that day. I think it was the only deck he played all day, so he got to play it against myself with a few different decks and some other players with different decks. So it's, a, it's an interesting one, that's for sure. It's a constant deck we see is this location style decks being played. I think uh, we'll have to make a meta shift and start including, you know, put to the torches in our deck to handle these locations. A little more target kill maybe to take care of Sansa and some of those characters that are in your way to, you know, that block those unopposed challenges. No, no hand. Awesome. Okay. So it looks like Throne Runner did an entry challenge which was blocked by Jeff and then Throne Runner passes. I understand Jeff's frustration while he's sitting here now, not like counting out his, his icons and his strength. The military challenge is too. Never mind. Sorry, it looks like uh, my bad on that. It was not a pass by Throner. He's doing a military challenge of stealth with Arya. Unopposed. So that will be unopposed by Jeff, which gives Throner another power, bringing him up to nine. Looks like the courtesan finally dies and drops her widow's whale sword on the ground, which was picked up by Jeff. Hopefully, to be ambushed with some of that money sitting there onto another character. And power challenge with Waymar Royce of four because he's got a plus one from uh, Longclaw there, also giving him renown. And it looks like widow's whale on Tyrion, who will block for six. So it looks like Throner's turned the game here to uh, be more on his offense. He's uh, starting to put the pressure on Jeff and put him on his back heels when usually it's the other way around with Throner's deck. He usually just turtles and sits defensively until he can build up a decent board and then come back at you, which uh, it seems like he's done very well. Uh, so he's up to 10 power there. Pulls out a Tears of Bliss for an Intrigue Challenge with Maester Aemon. Um, I will pass. So that's the end of the phase. So it looks like, sorry, it, it was Jeff doing an Intrigue Challenge with the Littlefinger, which was blocked by Sansa. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, I don't win dominance anymore. Eight. So he gains two power for the wall. You have nine. Well, oh, are you... Uh... Just let me quick, quickly check when we actually counted. So now they're checking when actually the Raven... The Raven's dominance action is uh, because it looks like it matters now because uh, if Throne Runner it pops, so now so Jeff's basically saying, uh, is that Raven gonna stay in play? If it is, you're gonna win dominance, but that's not how it works. You'll actually do dominance first. But it's uh, it's funny how Throne Runner actually checks the rules now that it's gonna actually matter in his favor. So <laughs> it's funny how players do that sometimes. They'll, they'll let a rule go, go, you know, they're not sure about a rule, but they'll let it go as long as it benefits them. But then, uh, you know, once it goes against them, then they have to they have to double check it. So, yeah, they did correct that, which was good to look that up while they're playing. Jeff is learning still, and uh, Throne Runner is just getting back into Throne, so it's good for him to know that, too. So, yeah, kids, do your dominance first. Worry about dominance right away, and once that's done, then go to your action windows. So we have thrown her up to 13 power. Wow, two away from the win. He's got a possible renown, uh, power that he can claim from Sir Waymar Royce. He's got stealth on Arya, 
Sansa's kneeling ability. So basically, the next round, unless Jeff can somehow steal, you know, three or four power, Throne Runner will pull up with the wall, uh, with the Iron Throne winning him dominance, and Sansa standing, and maybe Sir Waymar Royce is uh, renowned. So he has lots of paths to victory right now. So Calling the Banners is played, which is going to gain him four gold. And Game of Thrones is played, which basically both players have to do an intrigue or have to win an intrigue challenge before they can initiate military or power. And you can win that intrigue on defense or offense, and it allows you to then do your other two challenge types. Yes. So draw phase, and because Throne Runner won initiative, he always makes his opponent go first. If I if he intrigues with Jorah, does she block the first reaction? And here we go, Lady Olena, the Queen of Thorns, is now in play, a little late, would have been nice early to help give some of that economy boost when she wins an Intrigue, she can drop a Tyrell character of 6 cost or lower into play, that's right kids, I said 6 cost or lower into play after she wins an Intrigue, on offense or defense, bananas, Cortis of the Rose is in play, so he definitely put out a bunch of Intrigue, Every single character has an intrigue on Jeff's side, which was great play on that plot, but I don't know if it'll be enough because Throne Runner basically is breaking the game here, and you, you think it's all about challenges. You you know if you think you can hold the opponent off on challenges, you're fine. But Throne Runner has other ways he's going to gain power every single round if you don't do anything. So he can just kind of sit back and earn a couple of power just by winning dominance and the wall. So. With a board like that, especially. Because you can't stealth all of it, especially out of Tyrell, Banner to the Lion. So, little fingers played on Throne Runner's side. Let's have some draw two cards. And we got a Messenger Raven out. And it looks like we're sitting on two gold on Throne Runner's side. So, challenges on Jeff's side. I didn't, yeah, I didn't get Robert out. I will. But it's just because you just built it. I find it's not that cool. Deck. You remember you shuffle it. Those are the only thing that you can do. I'll just shuffle it back here. So, quite big boards here. That's uh, usually a rea uh, basically a reaction from. Doing anything. Where did you go? From the wi a wildfire assault, sorry, being played early in the game. Usually the opponents after that will uh, just start to vomit their hands out on the board. No holds barred. Trying to push for that win. So just pondering how how can he stop him from gaining two power? Can he get that unopposed challenge through? He has no stealth on tie or on uh, little or, <laughs> not little finger sorry on uh, the little man uh, Tyrion has no stealth because he's been milk a poppied so he's definitely not gonna be able to. Still past anyone. So, Intrigue of Eight was Pax the Red Wine and the Queen of Thorns. Eight. Eight, yes. And he blocks with Sansa for two. Draw two cards? Yep. Two cards are drawn off High Garden from uh, the plus five bonus there. Or winning by five, sorry. Oh, bring her in for free. And Olenna's informants dropped in, and when she dropped in during the challenges phase, you can name a challenge type, and then you can do a second, uh, you can initiate a second challenge of that type. Oh, that, yeah. yeah. I'm seeing her hat, I don't know. Let me guess, meager contribution. So, Hands of Judgment is discarded for Intrigue Claim. Yeah, I'll do another Intrigue. Looks like another Intrigue challenge is going to be initiated by Jeff due to uh, Olenna's informant. Um, a four. So he does a, an intrigue of four, and Littlefinger blocks for four. And a meager contribution is discarded for intrigue claim. But uh, Jeff's kneeling out a lot of his board here. I don't think he's enough to stop uh, Throne Runner's comeback here with all his standing characters and his stealth on Arya. 
think you win but uh, yeah Jeff's realizing there's nothing he can do here and uh, realizing it's gonna be over here um, I could power but you can uh... yeah he's debating doing a power challenge but uh... well I guess regardless I get two for the wall one for stance and one for yeah yeah so Throner is just stating basically he can stealth military for Arya, get an unopposed. Sansa can stand for a power. Iron Throne can win him dominance at this point to get him a power. And the wall will gain him two. So that's five power he can gain no problem. And they shake and it's over. And that's the first game in our Hobby Kingdom. Casual play on Halloween of all days uh, in the morning and afternoon. And I want to thank everyone for coming out. Look forward to more videos there. And uh, Throne Runner takes it there with the Night's Watch, Banner of the Wolf. Um, just want to thank again to uh, those two for playing on the camera and letting me record them and being good sports. And the Hobby Kingdom, Rich, thanks for letting us play there and uh, being a good host and a great player. And uh, letting us hang out and play some Thrones. And uh, yeah, make sure you guys, uh, if you're in the Burlington area, come by Hobby Kingdom and play with us on Wednesday nights. Thanks a lot for watching and don't forget to subscribe.